And here, at last, we are at Tomland, the largest power station in the scheme, and the last one before the mixed waters of the Dune, the Duch, the Dee, and the Ken spill out into the Solway Firth. It has three turbines, although they are slightly smaller than Ken Dunes too. The station can produce the most power of all the stations on the Galloway Hydro Scheme, 30,000 kilowatts. Although it is fed by the reservoir at Tonglen Loch, it also needs the additional control of the Glenlocher Barrage to manage the flow of water into the turbines. As in other parts of the scheme, there were some objections lodged to the construction at Tongland. During the 1920s, the old Adel Johnson factory at Tongland, where the Galloway car was built by Dorothy Pullinger and her female engineers, was sold to the Scottish Artificial Silk Manufacturing Company, which made Rayon. The factory was already equipped with its own DC hydroelectric turbine from its days manufacturing aeroplane parts for the First World War. And this was used by the silk company to power the factory. Not only were they using the River Dee for hydroelectrics, they were also dumping their processed effluent into the water as well. The effluent was treated, then released just before the intake for the turbine, so it could be broken up more by passing through it before being released into the river again at the turbine outlet. Obviously, the arrival of the Galloway Hydro scheme was a threat to their business as it would potentially reduce the flow of water to their own turbine and affect how they dealt with their effluent. Now, there are several similar situations ongoing on the dune at this time too and the power company paid for improved turbines for a number of Ayrshire companies using that river. So they entered into negotiations with the silk company in that spirit. Firstly, it was agreed the power company would pipe water from Tunglin Loch to the Silk Company, providing 215 cubic feet of water per minute of the day, 24 hours a day, with all expenses paid for by the power company. The power company also offered either a hugely reduced power rate to the Silk Company or a slightly higher rate of power and a handsome payment for the Silk Company's water rights and an upgrade to their electrical equipment so the factory could be converted to AC power, if that's what was decided. The Silk Company was to build its own substation for the power to be delivered to it. After accepting the offer, the Silk Company withdrew its objection to the bill but before any work could be started, the company went into liquidation in January 1931. The liquidators offered the silk company to the power company, valuing it at £20,000. The power company, having first deducted the cost of the work to be done for the silk company, offered £9,000, but this was not accepted. The silk company then failed to attract any bids at auction. Eventually, the power company paid £5,000 for the factory, which they fitted with a permanent power supply. They sold it on, on to the owner of what would become Galloway Eggs, and it spent many years as a factory chicken farm. The sister Sinclair at Ashton Villa in Kirkcubri also objected to the scheme, but they withdrew their objection after being offered electricity to their villa free for up to 500 units a year for the rest of their lives. Not a bad offer at all, so it's not really a surprise that they withdrew their objection. The next major issue that Tonglin encountered was the problem of sustaining the stocks of salmon and trout along the River Dee. Tonglin was actually used as the main model for experiments, determining the potential damage fish could take from passing through a turbine. By using the pressures within the turbines at Tonglin, a tank of fish were subjected to those same pressures to see what damage they might incur. These were highly variable over a very small time frame, from as much as 45 psi inside the spiral casing of the turbine, then down to as low as 9 psi all over the course of 20 seconds. The fish in the tank suffered no visible ill effects, and it must be said, there have been no reports of stunned fish in the River D below the power station. Ladders were added to all of the dams except clattering shaws, as it is man-made and artificially stocked with trout. There were, are screens to cover the intake to prevent them from entering the Glenlee Tunnel. Now, Tunglin may be the largest station, but it only operates under a net head of 106 feet, approximately 
32 metres, much lower than Glenlee's 307 foot. Glenlocher is the most important control for the station as Tunglin Loch cannot sustain even that little on its own for very long. It is also the reason that Tunglin's turbines are shorter than Glenlee's. Tunglin produced its first electricity on Tuesday the 10th of May 1935, but it wasn't until March 1938 the station was officially opened when a joint ceremony of opening and commemoration for Colonel William McClellan was held. William McClellan was the main architect of the scheme, but he had passed away in 1934 before seeing it come to fruition. The memorial plaque that was unveiled at the opening ceremony is part of the Tunglin tour. The permanent manager of the Galloway Hydro scheme, Mr F. H. Williams, and his deputy, Mr Warnock, began their posts on the 1st of October 1934. They immediately began recruiting the permanent staff that would be needed to run and maintain the scheme once it was finished. 78 staff were eventually recruited, but for the initial years of the scheme's operation, some additional men were also employed to finish up all of the wee leftover tasks from construction painting buildings, putting up fences, and so on. In 1938, the Galloway Hydro Scheme had a massively popular exhibit at the Empire Exhibition in Bella Houston Park in Glasgow. And since then, the Visitor Centre at Tunland has been a successful tourist attraction, offering a tour of the power station and surrounding site, and the Memorial Park plaque to William McClellan. There was even a petting zoo there. Regular buses went out to it from Kirkubri every summer for many years. The centre closed to visitors in 2007, causing some local controversy. Scottish Power cited the risks of children playing close to the water as a reason for the closure. There are still tours of Tunglin available. They can only be booked in advance for groups. The Galloway Hydro Scheme will officially be 90 years old in 2026 even though electricity production was already underway by that date. It surpassed the original expectations for generation capacity and became the inspiration for the Highlands Hydro schemes in Crean Larach and the Great Glen, among others. In 1985, another hydro plant was constructed at Drumjohn, where the Drumjohn needle valve controls the flow of water from Loch Doon into the Carshfern Lane. The station was built to take advantage of the power of the water going through the valve. Although it is a small station with only one turbine, it plugs a gap in the efficiency of the whole scheme. Where before, when too much water was flooding through the needle valve, it would be released into a nearby burn and lost to the scheme. It's now only released in this way when the plant isn't operating for maintenance. The whole scheme continues to operate well to this day, proving the success and sustainability of this form of power generation. It can power 218,000 homes, even now in this age of high electrical consumption. The Galloway Hydro scheme became part of Scottish power when the energy companies were privatised by the Conservative government of Margaret Thatcher in the late 80s and early 90s. In 2018, it was acquired by Drax from Scottish Power and they have begun a major refurbishment scheme, including work on the Glenlocker Barrage and, as you can see, Tunglin Power Station itself. SBN Energy Networks also began construction of a new substation at Glenlee, which involved the repurchasing and demolition of many of the purpose-built workers' houses at Glenlee Village, something which has proved controversial locally. The construction of the Galloway Hydro Scheme was a huge project with an ambitious scope that radically changed this part of Galloway forever. It was a massive work of infrastructure undertaken during the Great Depression, creating jobs while boosting the local economy with cheap, sustainable electricity. It was a publicly funded scheme and, for the largest part of its history, was also publicly maintained. It was and is also a highly successful scheme. Perhaps we can look forward to another 90 years of renewable energy from the Galloway Hydro Scheme.